Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, Minister Ladies and Gentlemen, Ministers, Peter Altmaier, Miss Vitale, Mr. Kaiser, Mr. Birol, Mr. La Camera, Ladies and Gentlemen, I beg your understanding for the fact that you have not been able to fully view the opening film, but that has been our first contribution towards saving energy. The second half will be shown in the course of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, change is on the horizon, but to see that change, we also have to change ourselves. I glaube, das ist das erste Mal, dass ich I think that this is for the very first time that I'm beginning my speech with a quote that is not by a great philosopher, an award-winning scientist, or an impressive politician. No, it is a quote by a 16-year-old school girl, school girl, Greta Thunberg, that is. Week after week, Friday after Friday, young people in countless places across the globe have been showing us, the responsible ones, have been showing us all up. They call upon us to do more for climate protection. They call upon us not only to acknowledge realities, but also to change things, to change ourselves. It is about our very existence. For quite some time now, climate policy has been about more than environmental policy. And ever since Fridays for Future, it has become, as we have come to realize, an issue and a topic of social policy too. It extends to the fields of, and that becomes ever more important for us here, an element of foreign policy, just as much as it uh, involves economic and health policy. For climate change has resulted in an ever-growing number of droughts, forest fires, floods and extreme weather events, and they occur with ever higher intensity. In many places of the world, people are losing their livelihood. They are forced to flee. The fight for increasingly scarce resources is, es is escalating. And in such a situation, the likelihood, as we unfortunately have been forced to realize, the likelihood of violent conflict is also rising. Climate change enhances risks, especially in contexts that are already fragile. It is a threat to peace and stability of regions all over the world. And this is why we decided to make the security political impact of climate change one of the priorities of our presidency, of our membership in the Security Council of the United Nations in the next two years. We are cooperating especially closely with the small island states for which climate change has long since become an immediate existential threat. Thus, I'm especially delighted to be able to welcome today my colleague Abdullah Shahid from the Maldives. Everyone, welcome to you, dear colleague. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change has also been on my agenda during my visits abroad. Only a few weeks ago, I met the mayor of Freetown in Sierra Leone, Yvonne Akisoya. She would really have every reason to complain, for her city is facing an enormous environmental problem. Roughly a thousand people died a year ago when an avalanche of mud bulldozed Freetown. On top of that, Freetown is groaning under the weight of enormous mountains of waste. And electricity is supplied by a grubby ship, a floating diesel power plant, whose chimneys release dark clouds and fumes that paint the blue sky black. However, the Lord Mayor was not complaining when she talked to me. Instead, she spoke about opportunities, about change. She spoke about sustainable policy and about how Freetown might be able to benefit from that. Given this anything but easy situation in this anything but easy city, she was able to design her own climate program. And what she said to me was, tell me more about the given. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, it's always a bit um, surprising that when you talk to someone in a foreign country, someone who usually speaks a foreign language, you realize that he's using a German term. 
I think this has happened more than once to a German brewer, a beer brewer, who was uh, approached with regard to the German beer purity law, because that is in a way, you know, well, no matter where you go, people think of it as being typically German. And the same has been true for the energy vendor, the energy transition. Roughly 50 ministers from all parts of the world participate in our conference, which goes to show that the German energy vendor has long since become a global energy transition, a global energy vendor. Already today, more money is invested in renewables than in fossil fuels. By the mid of the 2020s, global oil production is to go down, according to the latest studies. The beginning of the end of the age of fossil fuels has long since begun. The energy transition is going to have a major geopolitical impact. On the one hand, this is going to be a positive impact because renewables will be available on a global scale. However, this also means that if we are that there will be fewer conflicts about access to fuels. States will then also be less able to use their energy resources as a means to exert pressure on other countries. But there will not only be winners, and we have to bear that in mind and factor it into our calculations. What is going to happen with, to those countries who depend to already today on a very large extent on the export of natural oil and natural gas? The risk of economic crisis and thus also the threat of political instability might rise uh, quickly in that regard. Thus, we should have an interest in uh, making sure that when business models of countries and states collapse, this does not necessarily trigger a conflict. And the best way to prevent such a development is to invest here and now in competitive renewables. The federal government and the German business community is ready. Uh, to act as your partner in order to support you in diversifying your different business models. And I trust that Mr. Kaiser will have more to say on this subject matter when he takes the floor from the point of view of industry. Ladies and gentlemen, roughly one billion people are still without access to electricity today. Renewables can make a contribution towards quickly reducing that number. The energy transition provides many countries with the opportunity to take a development leap. Existing dependencies can be reduced and the growing demand for electricity can be reduced. The energy transition also is a giant driver of growth. In Germany alone, we will replace more than 40 gigawatt by from coal fire power plants in the coming 19 years and replace them by renewables. Other countries may have even more complex and more ambitious plans. This will mean investments, new jobs and economic growth. Already today, more than 10 million people are employed in the sector of renewables and that figure is undoubtedly going to markedly rise in the future. Because of that great economic potential, we have to be very much on our toes, watching that this growth market remains open for companies from all over the world and that the necessary technologies are available for everyone. We uh, stand up for global standards and we place our trust in that regard in international organizations like IRENA and the IEA uh, when it comes to setting standards. Thus, I'm delighted about the fact that Francesco La Camera is with us here today. The more so, as this happens to be his first official trip since he became Director General of IRENA. Now, the global energy tradition also means that we have to create regional networks and regional integration. Let's not forget that. Our energy is to come above all from wind power and photovoltaics. However, the wind doesn't blow uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, and the sun doesn't shine without end. As long as the storage technologies have not uh, de been developed sufficiently, we still have to transport energy across long distances, which means that we have to integrate our grids and networks more than has been the case in Europe, also with our North African neighbours. In Germany, we have all made, already made impressive progress, ladies and gentlemen. Roughly 40% of the electricity produced come from renewables today. But that is but a first step. Much work still lies ahead. Let us just think of the reduction of emissions in the sectors of transport and heating, the fossil fuel phase-out, and the grid expansion. But despite 
all of these challenges, we are confident and we believe that we have chosen the right path. We have to be successful in further increasing the share of renewables and whilst maintaining us, our country as a, an industrialized country with a high level of prosperity. And for many countries, Germany is perceived as a pioneer of the energy transition and we will make put that part to good use in order to up the international speed. I'm not telling you anything new, ladies and gentlemen, when I say what I'm going to say now, but I believe it cannot be stressed enough. It's really amazing to see where you have to make that point wherever you travel, but global challenges cannot be tackled uh, single-handedly. Climate change does not stop at borders. Neither should the energy transition. Thus, we have to cooperate ever more closely at all levels in the field or in the framework of the United Nations at the level of states, but also at the level of regions, of cities and local communities. And everybody has to be taken on board. Politicians, civil society, industry and science and the academia. Thus, use this conference, benefit from the many side events during the Berlin Energy Week, get to know people, make contact, develop ideas, in order to globalize the energy transition in the best sense of the term. Dialogue and be a part of the global energy vendor. Herzlichen Dank. Herzlich willkommen. Thank you very much indeed. A very warm welcome. And I'm happy to now hand the floor to Peter Altmaier. <laughs>